Hello, Becky, and a couple other cameras I see clicking in at this point. Friends, thank you for being here. We'll give folks a minute or two to uh, check in, uh, and we will go ahead and get started with our evening service. Uh, you may have noticed that Alfred is not on screen with me tonight. Uh, that is because Alfred and his wife uh, Jennifer had their baby girl on Sunday evening. Uh, so Eliora is, is healthy and well and welcomed into the world. Everybody is home and safe and that is good. Uh, and we are very, very happy to uh, give Alfred at least a couple of weeks off here so he can honor his, uh, his calling as a new father and what it means to be there for his kid. So uh, that's uh, why he is not with us and will not be with us for the next couple of weeks. That's actually on my direction. Uh, hey, go be, a, go be a dad. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, if anybody wants to check in who has not done so, please feel free to do so now. And we will get started in just a minute. So good evening and welcome to this evening service and want to uh, invite you tonight to do a little thinking about what it is we are attending to these days. Knowing that in life there will always be losses and gains, there will be life and death and a whole lot of it depends on where we look and how we choose to focus. Tonight I want to invite us and thank you for choosing to take a little bit of your time on this beautiful summer evening to be here live. Uh, I know that some folks check in a little bit later, but want to welcome you to this space knowing that here there is an expectation of some new life. We can grieve that which is, is lost or not the way we want it, but we always end in a space of thank you God for what can be and for the beauty that is very much present now. So I'll open up with, this is actually a, a communion song we did for this past Sunday, but I kind of like it. Um, and it'll be done on guitar instead of piano this evening. And it reminds us that we are always welcome to the table. We are always welcome to worship. We are always welcome to a space such as this. This is We Gather Here. <laughs> Is now our gracious host, 
Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We gather soon, where angels sing. We'll see the glory of our Lord and coming King. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait come take the bread come drink the wine come share the lord come take the bread come drink the wine come share the lord so god tonight that's exactly what we asked for that we have a chance to be hosted by your spirit, that we can share in your goodness, that where our eyes are affixed may be places of light and life, renewal and possibility. May your spirit touch this time through these airwaves and internet connections. May your spirit lift ours wherever we are. We come to you this night to worship and to gather. In Christ, in your holy name we pray. Amen. And so tonight I want to talk for just a minute about new life. There was a couple of things that sparked this idea for the evening. Um, the first is quite an obvious one, which is Alfred and Jennifer had their baby girl, Eliora. And that was Sunday night, and it's always just an incredible joy to welcome a new life into the life of this broader community and church. And what a particular gift at a particular time here, as Alfred and Jennifer have been through so much, as he is an international graduate student and coronavirus and administrative challenges around who is welcome and who is not and who might have to go back home and who does not, and all of the adventures of what that means. And then in the chaos, and in the challenge, and in the potential frustrations and darkness of that, comes their daughter, comes new life. And she is well, and Jennifer is well, and Alfred is well. And this morning, I got a phone call from Alfred and in the background I heard this wailing baby she has got really good lungs she's a very healthy young girl <laughs> who let everybody know that her first couple of days on this planet uh, maybe require some adjustment and she would prefer that things felt and happened a little bit differently she made her presence known the new life in Alfred and Jennifer's home is undeniable it is loud and demanding and wonderful and I had a conversation with a reporter earlier today. Someone calling uh, on what's become a bit of a theme these days. You know, so as a leader in a faith community, how are things going uh, in a protracted season of a pandemic? What are the challenges you see? What are the unexpected gifts? I've had this conversation a few times and had it once again today and found myself repeating what has been true and that is, while there is an awful lot of, of loss and challenge and change, there are also spaces of some real new possibilities here. There's some beautiful things that are coming up, and we're being forced into creating new ways of being community and thinking rather creatively and way out of the box around what it means to teach and to learn, to worship and to be and that's not altogether bad. It's much more quiet than a screaming baby, but still there is new life possible here. And so we gather tonight and I want to give you a couple of scriptural examples of the quiet and the loud. As we think about new life and choose where to look. The prophets of the Old Testament are very loud. <laughs> They're not a subtle bunch. God giving them the language to speak to a particular people 
if you have read them and read them closely, you'll know that rarely is the language subtle. Rarely is the message hidden. Rarely is there a question that there is something wrong which now needs to be repaired so that there can be something right. The prophets in the Old Testament are a little bit like Alfred and Jennifer's daughter this morning. This yelling, <laughs> see, hear, recognize that there is new life possible and present and there are things you need to do to nurture that and to love it well, to be who you were called to be in their case as parents, in our case as followers of a living God. The prophets of the Old Testament really loud, demanding attention for the new life that is before us. And now I want you to think, if you will, for a moment, about the crowds who observed the miracles of Jesus. Not the people who received the miracles themselves, but the crowds that Scripture reminds us of frequently were present to observe the miracles of Jesus Christ. Much more quiet. What was it like to be one of the multitudes who was fed on the hillside with loaves and fishes? How do you think about that extraordinary thing they didn't imagine possible? but bore witness to, and were fed by just a little bit. What about the people who saw the woman with the issue of blood, who reached out and touched Jesus' cloak and was healed? Not her herself, but those who observed God pause and notice, heal and redeem. What went through their heads that night? What about those who saw Jesus speak to the sins being forgiven of the paralyzed young man lowered through a roof as he interrupted this conversation between Jesus and the temple authorities and the wise ones of the Judaic tradition? What did they think when the man got up and walked through them, the one who could not walk before it's a little more quiet to observe the beauty and the new life and the possibilities they didn't imagine around them, but still they could choose where to look. I want to suggest for each of us this night and in this day and in this world we find ourselves in that just like all times always and forever, there is life and death, there is loss and gain, there is beauty and darkness, and we have a choice on where we will look and what we will look for. It does not deny the existence of the other side if we simply turn our back to it, but we are compelled or limited. We are drawn forward or called into shrinking down by where we choose to look. I want to suggest that as a resurrection people, we are always clearly called to look for life and to, light in, and to delight in where we find it. We grieve the loss, we acknowledge the reality, and we are a resurrection people who look for the light and look for the life and so perhaps there's one of these two things happening in your life right now. Perhaps there is a screaming baby saying, I am here. Perhaps there is a prophet that is speaking to your life and your lifestyle that is shouting, there are things that must be different. There is a better way of living. The pause that was created by the pandemic is an opportunity to reprioritize what you value and why. Perhaps there is a loud, undeniable voice demanding your attention and your returning to a new life. Perhaps it's more subtle than that. 
Perhaps there are things you are beginning to notice. There are moments you're beginning to pay attention to. There are little gifts in a day when you recognize that things you have taken for granted you now have time to attend to. Perhaps there is a still small voice that is speaking to the new life possible. You've heard a story or seen a moment of beauty. You've borne witness to grace and good neighborliness. You've seen others help each other out instead of just yell at one another on social media. And it's compelling for you. Who do you want to be? How will you live in this new reality? I'm going to suggest there's always life and death. There's always light and dark. The issue will be, how do we look? Where do we look? And why? As a resurrection people, please try and answer the call of the prophets yelling in the background. Or answer the call of the still small voice that you might take a gentle step forward into what is possible and beautiful. And next, new life is here. It has always been here. Wherever it is found, choose that. So I see that Sue and Brenda and, and Ken and Ruth and Becky have all checked in. Thank you for doing that. And I know there's some other people who are with us tonight. Want to give us a chance to have a super quick announcement just about the life of the church. Uh, if you are a, an active member of this church locally, um, there's a couple things to know. Uh, first of all, uh, if you have received a worship survey from us, please fill that out. I know that you may have received it a couple of times with some technical glitches on SurveyMonkey and all of that, but do fill that out. It, it helps us understand how we're going to move forward in terms of potentially reopening this space uh, with some significant restrictions, but open all the same uh, for some public worship opportunities in the weeks to come. So if you haven't had a chance to do that and you are a local active member who would avail themselves of the opportunity of, of coming to the physical space, please do fill that out. That being said, uh, if you are someone in another space or another state or another, another place, thank you so much for being a part of this community and conversation. Please know we are fully committed. Uh, to keeping online opportunities available from now until the foreseeable future. Uh, regardless of where the pandemic leads us, we will also have online uh, community and better versions of it. Our internet is being improved. We have uh, equipment that is in place or is coming. And really quite soon, uh, we will not have the delays or the single camera issues that we've been dealing with since this started. Thank you for bearing with us, loving us, and being a part of the community in the foibles and the failures and the adventures of what it means to be in this space. So please know that. And for those who are just checking in now, uh, quick awareness that uh, Alfred will not be with us for a couple of weeks, and that's because he is home being a dad to his new baby girl, Eliora. And that's on my request. We'll see him again in a couple of weeks. Or he may <laughs> be delighted to have a break from a yelling baby. So that all being said, let me check in. Um, how is it, friends, I can be in prayer for you? Uh, how can we be in prayer for one another? Um, and as you begin to type those in, if you choose and wish, uh, I will let you know that part of what we have learned from surveys is that it may be beneficial to have uh, an opportunity for folks to send in prayers uh, anonymously or specifically but asked to not have their name shared in advance of these gatherings. It is a little intimidating to type in our prayers knowing that the service is recorded and will be put up on YouTube and folks can see that and respond to us. So uh, in the coming week uh, and then after that, you will be given an opportunity to, to go ahead and email prayers directly to me. Um, and I will gather those prior to this service and the Sunday service and we can lift those up in whatever format you're most comfortable with. Um, but for now, and but for this evening, if there are prayers you have, I invite you to share them. Yeah, 
Yes, I see prayers for our divided country. How uh, incredibly true that is. Um, in this uh, budding season of election and all the tensions that are coming with that, in the racial divide that has always been true but is now much more obvious as it is being highlighted. Uh, for the economic issues, as we recognize there's some significant class disparity for the health issues uh, for folks who are profoundly at risk, either without insurance or with COVID, or a myriad of other concerns and challenges in their lives. I see prayers for Charlotte's speedy recovery. Uh, she apparently had a, a fall um, and is hoping to recover quickly from that. I will tell you that my, my let me see if I can do this right, it is, she would be my great aunt. Uh, my great aunt Edna uh, died a couple of days ago at age 91. Um, the younger sister of of my grandmother uh, and Edna has three children who all have wonderful ways of being in the world um, and her her passing was was well managed and deeply faithful uh, with her family and we are grateful for for the kindness of the gentility with which she passed and the way that her family was able to be with her for that I see Becky, I have started back to school this week and students start Monday virtually. Uh, please play for my kiddos in this new learning experience, absolutely. Uh, for teachers and students and families and all the various versions of in-person or online or hybrid and how does that work with families and daycare and safety and there is no perfect model or perfect way to do this. So we pray that the wisest ways might be the ones enacted, that folks will be responsible and compassionate and sacrificial in their caring for their neighbor, and that this will go okay. Um, and if it does not, may there, may there quickly be uh, recovery and choices made to protect the greater good. So for Becky, yes, absolutely for you, for your children, for all the teachers returning, including my wife and, and students returning, uh, some of whom are in the families connected on this gathering tonight. Yes, indeed, we pray. We pray for those returning to college at this time. Yup, uh, there, there are colleges giving it a try and there are colleges that are, are shutting down. Uh, my niece, who is supposed to start as a freshman at Smith College, got word that they are not opening at all. Um, and so she, with just a couple of weeks notice, went from being excited about moving into a new dorm room to having her freshman year be a virtual experience. And then for those who are going on to, onto campuses and what that all looks like, this is rather a great and grand experiment and we do pray that uh, folks can be thoughtful and safe in that space. I would pray for the people of Beirut uh, and the after the massive explosion and the ways in which that revealed governmental challenges and some disparity and concerns in that nation. And speaking of that, that is profoundly true in so many other places around the world for all the spaces of, of violence and corruption, of war and destruction, of the most vulnerable being taken advantage of instead of being taken care of. Lord, we are in prayer for those who you have clearly expressed a deep desire to nurture and claim back into your heart. Friends, let us pray. God, what a gift it is to gather. Thank you for the times that you have yelled us into new life. Thank you for the times where you have whispered us into new considerations. Thank you for the goodness and the resilience and the, and the beautiful, happy moments. Thank you for some gentle passings and lives well lived. And we ask that you be with us in our anxiety, in our fear, and in our choices. Be with our own selves, be with our families and those that we love, be with all of the institutions that will 
try to restart in a world recreated at the moment for schools and hospitals for restaurants and artisans for churches and medical facilities for all who are trying to make a way when the way is not clear Keep us wise, keep us safe, keep us faithful, keep us kind. And grab a hold of the hearts, Lord, of all of the leaders in this world. That your eyes might be their eyes. That those for whom you weep might bring a tear to the eyes of those who lead. So that together we can wander past this desert into a land that was promised. Whether there is milk and honey, we do not know, but it sure would be good to have no corona. God, grant us peace enough to open our eyes to possibility, grant us strength enough to choose to rise, and grant us love enough to be able to gather in community and treat our neighbors in ways that are holy, as we love them as you have loved us. For this and all the prayers unspoken, untyped, unmentioned, we know that you feel them, you take them by your Holy Spirit to the very throne of your grace. And there they are held in the best hands there can be, those of you, our Creator. Lord, we bring all of this and all things to you in the name of Jesus, who is our risen Christ. Amen. So if you want to join in singing this, you can. By the way, uh, we will also, as we are going forward in the next couple weeks, begin to send in advance to those who wish uh, a little bit of a version of a bulletin um, and some song places to, for people to be able to, to join in. Uh, hymnals will be available to pick up from the church and, and have at home for our local members and those kinds of things. So we're working on those pieces. But thank you. This this comes around three or four times. It's intended in a round, but there's only nine cameras right now, so this can be done as one. Farewell, good friends. Farewell, good friends. Shalom, shalom. Till we meet again, till we meet again, Shalom, Shalom. Farewell, good friends, farewell, good friends, Shalom, Shalom. Till we meet again, till we meet again, Shalom, Shalom. Farewell, good friends, farewell, good friends, Shalom, Shalom. Till we meet again, till we meet again, Shalom, Shalom. Your turn. Farewell, good friends, farewell, good friends, Shalom, Shalom. Till we meet again, till we meet again, Shalom, Shalom. Friends, our Zoom prayer meeting is at 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, if you wish to gather there, you're certainly welcome to. But for now and for this evening, thank you for joining us here. May God be with you, and may God's face shine upon you. May grace be known to you, and peace be given unto you. Until we meet again. Shalom.